Hey, everybody. Thank you for joining us for today's episode of Real Estate Disruptor. So we've got Nicholas Lovano and Octavius Bennett from Millennial Flippers, and they've flown in from L.A. to share how they earned their first million dollars and what they've done in the last 12 months to wholesale 100 properties. If this is your first time tuning in, I am Steve Trang, broker and owner of Stunning Homes Realty, founder of the OfferFast Homes app, the only MLS for off-market wholesale properties, and I'm on a mission to create 100 millionaires. So that, if that's something you're interested in, let's connect on Instagram. And a reminder again, I do have, uh, we are still giving away free shirts. So tune, tune in all the way through to find out details. If you're excited for today's show, please give me a wave, give me a thumbs up. And as a friendly reminder, I don't charge them for this show. I don't make any money doing this. So here's all I ask. This is what costs for you to listen to this show. If you get value today, please tell a friend. You can share this episode right now, tag a friend below, or tell them your best takeaway from the show later on. That way we can all grow together. And don't forget, this is a live show, so please post your questions for Nick and Octavius to answer. You ready? Boom, let's go, baby. Yeah. All right. Let's rock and roll. Happy to be here, man. I'm happy for you guys. Uh, I yes, appreciate sir. you guys coming out. Uh, so, <clears throat> first quick question is, what got you guys into real estate? That's a that's an interesting question. I, you want me to kick yeah, it go off? For it. And, yeah, go for it. So, I, I think that I, I remember a few years back, man, I was in a place where I was just stuck, frustrated, broke. Didn't really know. I had so much ambition, but I didn't know what what to, I didn't have a vehicle to put the ambition in. And I was always wealth motivated, but I didn't have just a vehicle, man. And I was searching. I was like praying to God on my knees every single night. I, I said I wanted to. I need a business. I know I want to be a businessman. What do I do? What do I do? Seeking, seeking heavily. And my aunt had blessed me with this uh, job, so I was on the Oprah tour. And we would go from city to city. I mean, we go to Houston, we go to Atlanta, we go to Miami, we go to Seattle, we go to LA, we go to everywhere. And it was three different circu- uh, three different instances where I run into a real estate developer. And I'm like, okay, it's a Tuesday afternoon. And this guy, he has a Rolex on and he's flying on the plane at two o'clock on a Tuesday afternoon. Like, what does this guy do? No, normally in my mind, like most people are at work on a Tuesday. What does this guy do? And then the second time I, I met somebody is they were just walking off the plane. They're like, hey, I'm a real estate developer. And then I searched them up and like, there's some big millionaire in Dallas. And I'm like, man, this sounds kind of. And so I started connecting the dots and I'm like, okay, real estate development. And then I'm like, well, what's the fastest way to get my foot in the door? And I remember telling Nick about this story. It was it was um, being a broker at Marcus and Millichap because the only person I knew at the time was this guy named Stacy, and he was in D.C. and he was a broker. And again, the same story, like oh, you know, wears nice suits, drives nice car, lives nice nice lifestyle. I'm like, I, I want something similar to that. So I was thinking, I'm like, well, if I if I can be a, a real estate broker for a little bit, then eventually maybe I could be a developer. Is what I was thinking. And so I I, I, I I'm done with the Oprah tour. And I set up the interview, right? And this is, I remember this to this day. I set up the interview. I go in there feeling good, nervous as heck. Mm -hmm. And I get into the interview and the guy's like, uh, so, uh, do you have, uh, what college did you go to? And I'm like, uh, cause I dropped out of college. And Mm -hmm. he goes, well, what's your job resume look like? And I go, uh, cause I didn't have any jobs. And so how are you going to bring somebody off the street who doesn't have any college degree or doesn't have any job experience? And how are you going to expect to put them in the position to sell multi-million dollar property? And it just didn't work. So they mm-hmm. didn't give me the job. And so I went back down the square, you know, zero and again, meditating for hours, praying, seeking, hoping that I can find something. And then I came across uh, wholesaling. But then it took me a long time to study and it it is a whole year process. And then I learned and I worked with a group on the East Coast for a little bit, moved to uh, California and then kind of started it up. And it just happened. Just I guess I got lucky, man. I got blessed. You know, I prayed and it it kind of came for me. And and for Nick, uh, Nick has a very interesting story and and he could probably get into his. Yeah, I'll I'll keep it short and sweet. Um, I saw an ad on Facebook and it was uh, an ad geared toward some uh, mentorship or guidance and it says sign up sign up for a free webinar and i came from um, i went to san diego state graduated got involved in um, the sales industry so i was a part of a network marketing company Mm -hmm. and got basically recruited in my senior year and um, really dove into that industry for three years and um, you know luckily um, i was you know i built a huge team you know at a young age in my early 20s um, through that specific company um, made a lot of money got to travel the world but most importantly, built these skills throughout that specific industry of network marketing. So I built sales skills, people skills, communication skills, got to travel, and I got burned out. And I remember I was on Facebook and I saw this ad and I was burned out of network marketing because I'd been traveling. It was great. It was fun. Um, but I kind of wanted to sleep in my own bed, you know, every single <laughs> Why was I traveling for, for that? 
Well, we'd have events. We'd have events, and I go speak in front of people. Oh, and so you're like one of like the success stories. You roll up in your Lambo. Yeah, and yeah. Tell it was everyone. BMW. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, I was one of those like early success stories within that company. Yeah. So and it was a wild ride. And the company is funny. It was based here um, in Tempe. But to make a long story short, I had a lot of success at a young age mm-hmm. and throughout the network marketing industry. Built these sales skills, people skills, communication skills. Got to travel to Europe. I was in Europe every ninety days. Wow. Um, living good. But I was kind of burned out and I was, you know, just about, I think, 23 years old. And um, I saw this ad and I said, I can do that. <clears throat> I can do that. And I said, if I'm, you know, and I basically took all these skills and I poured them into real estate, more specifically wholesaling and um, reached out to Octavius. Him and I have been business partners long ago. It's crazy. When he, when he called me that day, I remember, I remember it like it was yesterday, Steve, he had called and I was thinking that he was trying to get me into another network marketing thing. So <laughs> yeah. I was kind of like yeah. not trying to dodge his, I was dodging yeah. his calls. It, it was crazy. Yeah. I call him and I say, hey, you know, I know, you know, you're, you know, dabbling, you're in real estate. Um, let's go out, you know, for dinner. We meet up and just kind of just hit it off. You know, I hadn't seen him for maybe two years. Yeah. Um, and I knew that I have a, I had a specific skill set. I knew Octavius, you know, for from that specific company. He was a part of that first network marketing company. Mm-hmm. And I knew he had a specific skill set. So that night um, in Pasadena, California, we basically shook hands and became business partners. Yep. So before you guys wholesaled your first deal, you guys became partners. Well, there's two how you got the first deal stories, right? So there's the story where when I first came out to California, you know, I, I came out with a little bit of money and I got my first deal door knocking. And then after that, I kind of fell miserably. And I'm sure we're going to get to this in a minute, mm-hmm. um, probably back in the middle of the podcast. I'd love to share. But uh, I, f- I got my first deal, $20,000, and I had to get the seller 10 and it was a door knock deal. And everything was all the way up. Then it went all the way down. I was homeless, sleeping in my car for like four months. Then after that, we closed the deal. We partnered up. Like two weeks after we partnered up, we closed the deal for $90,000. And so there's like two little how you got your first deal stories, but we yeah. can kind of share so, a little bit later. Yeah. So let's talk about that. Your first, yeah. your, your 90. So you guys partnered up. So we partnered up. Um, that night, we had dinner, partnered up, officially became partners, start door knocking foreclosures literally the next day. Mm-hmm. Door knocking foreclosures. Where was this? California. California. Where in Lancaster. California? So, so, we, so, so how we do it, for, and for the people, we got the list from propertyradar.com. So this is how the whole thing works. Get the list from propertyradar.com and we would map it out. So we spent about mm, about 45 minutes mapping the whole route out because we pull the list and then you got to sort it. So there's this little website, I can't remember what it was, and then you sort the whole route, uh, uh, the whole uh, route, and so we yeah. would go down from Southern California, from San Diego, and we go all the way up to uh, San Francisco. So we 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 take up any everything what? in between, every single foreclosure. So there's about two hundred something, three hundred uh, properties that actually have equity that are foreclosures, and we'd knock every single last one. And then we wow. go to FedEx and we get one of those free little envelopes, and then we we because it looks like you know it looks legitimate. Looks legitimate. Yeah. So yeah. we put a little letter in there, and then we were literally staying in. Uh, <laughs> We were staying in the what was it, the it, hotel. We would we would find and this is and for anybody that's that's brand new to the business, um, the the reason why I think I mean everything happens for a reason, but the skill set you will learn, door knocking foreclosures will last you a lifetime because yeah. we went through trials and tribulations and the whole time our goal is let's let's get a property under contract, take all those proceeds whatever they may yeah. be and pour them into our real real estate operation right. Mm-hmm. Um, and so, you know, I had, I remember seeing a podcast from, I think Mark Cuban, he says, make money and then pour that money into your business instead of taking out a loan or things of that nature. So that was our goal. And we would knock these foreclosures and there's nothing like people that are in a distressed situation oh in the weirdest yeah. parts of California. Yeah. And so you can just imagine the stories and things of that nature. But, and you know, to make a long story how, short, how, how it, how it turned, how it, tra- how, how this transitioned into $90,000. Cause it was like an indirect situation. I, I'm, we're firm believers in like pounding the vibration and like mm-hmm. what you yeah. kind of, you kind of read what you sow, you get back what you give type thing. Mm-hmm. So we knew we were pounding the vibration by knocking the door. So we were filling up the, we were filling up the so cup. Right. And then, and then, and then essentially, uh, it came out of nowhere where we got a referral of somebody just called Hey, I heard you guys are buying houses. I need help. Blah, 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 blah. Out of a referral out of nowhere. And, and I'll tell you this. Um, again, just the biggest tip you can give anybody starting out is let people know what you're doing. Yeah. I remember it was three weeks into our partnership, three weeks of door knocking. And I was telling each and every single person that my new business, I said, I'm flipping houses. I wasn't explaining, hey, wholesaling, bring a buyer in, getting because people are going to say it sounds they don't illegal. Understand it. 
right? Yeah. And so yeah. I was telling everybody that I knew, hey, do you know anybody who's looking to sell? Hey, do you know anybody in a distress situation? Hey, do you know anybody? Do you know anyone who's looking to sell a fixer upper? Mm -hmm. And someone called my cell phone, shot me a text and said, hey, I know somebody who's in this situation. You should reach out. Yeah. And I remember sitting at a Starbucks and we were game planning our next, you know, door knocking venture. Oh, man. And, and I shot her a message, a text yeah. message. And, uh, and you know, I, we booked the appointment and we go to this property in uh, Almonte, California. And I'll never forget driving up to that first property because it was squatter occupied. Uh, she was back, you know, $30,000 plus in taxes. And there was a foreclosure There's date. A couple gangs over there, too. And so, yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so that's how that first lead came in. But if I, you know, if you don't let people know what you're doing, that lead in it would have never come in. And then obviously it translated into $90,000. You know, it's funny too. Like, I think that's great. It's a huge point, right? And I think a lot of people miss it because for me, you know, I, I see a lot of people sending me like Facebook friend requests mm -hmm. and I click on their profile. I have no idea who they are. Right? I'm assuming yeah. they found me, you know, through one of our Facebook groups, but yeah. I have no idea who they are. Yeah. And I click on it and there's just no indication whatsoever that they buy houses. Huh. Mm -hmm. Right. There's no indication yeah. they're in real estate. There's nothing. And yeah. it's like, yeah, yeah, actually, so yeah. what you're saying, like everyone has to know. Absolutely. Yeah, and that's every, to. every channel, every social media, everywhere. It's gotta be it's everywhere. It's like you gotta own it. Almost. And, and make sure you, if you're new, especially cause the whole, I, I just let them know, Hey, you're looking to purchase property mm -hmm. to, to explain A through Z of what you, the, the wholesale operation. Yeah. You might just, you know, just don't go that route. Right. I, I purchased property. You know, anybody who's looking to possibly sell, that's your go-to line. You gotta keep it simple. I had a buddy. I was like, talking to him and uh I, I bumped him in and out after like a few years i hadn't seen him yeah and he's like what do you do i was like oh you know i i, I buy properties you know I, I turn around and sell to someone else for a profit yeah yeah and he's like wholesale i was like oh you know what wholesale is? <laughs> <laughs> start speaking the yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah yeah but i'm with you all right layman terms you yeah. just gotta put yeah I, I buy houses yeah there you go i buy houses i sell them for profit uh so then what were your early struggles when you guys partnered up i mean you guys are doing this crazy tour the, i think the early struggle steve was not having the money Mm -hmm. But see, we didn't make the struggle an excuse. You see, uh, we didn't have the money to really, really ramp up the marketing like we wanted to. Because we knew, like, at the end of the day, if you do more marketing, you're going to make more money. But you got to have the money to do the marketing. So, like, we were just stuck right there. We were stuck. And we are just figuring out, like, Nick, what, what are we going to do? What and then we finally, it clicked. And we said, well, you know what? Let's create a creative way to get a whole bunch of people jobs working and then so we can get them employ deploy marketing and so what we did was we created this call center and we created mm -hmm. an internship he pretty much because of the network marketing thing he had a you know he had a bunch of people already following stuff like that so he bought in a whole rack of people got them all trained up and then next thing you know we got everybody on the phones and we were closing deals we went from like two deals a month to eight deals to 10 to 12 and then kind of steady growed and then it went down a little bit then went back up so that's i mean i would say the, as far as early struggles, that was one of the biggest ones. It's just not having the capital, that little gap period. But then after 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 figuring it out and bringing in more bodies and just being creative with our with what we did have, yeah. um, you Absolutely. know, we were able to turn uh, nothing into something. How long did it take you guys to go from that point, right, where you guys said, "I'm not going, uh, yeah. we're going to partner up," to your first deal, to you starting a call center? Six months, something like yeah. that. I would say yeah, some something along something like six months. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, there was um, some trial and error within that time frame because you go from hey, you know, we got a big we got a big Kahuna ninety thousand dollars, right? Mm -hmm. So how do you deploy that income into strategic marketing channels? Because Octavia says it best. He says more marketing means more leads, more leads, more dollars, right? However, strategic marketing, right? In strategic uh, marketplaces and strategic, you know, what are you going to use for your marketing, right? Mm -hmm. And obviously, we chose cold calling. You know, I I had lots of experience and just sales. Octavius had experience in just building out like the systems and the dollar and the list and things of that data and things of that nature. And so we says, hey, you take care of this part. I'll bring the people in. And I'm going to get them trained up like soldiers and we're going to rock and roll. Yeah. And so scaling from one to two callers to 10 to 15 callers, things like that, and then having trainings and then some people falling off and then really getting it down to where we can produce on a consistent monthly basis. I think that, you know, had a lot to play, with, play within that growth as well. So I've heard LA is just stupid competitive. That's a lot of crabs in the bucket. Yeah. So the bucket. how are you guys separating yourself from the competition there? You know, we don't like to look at competition because there's this quote, it goes like, out of abundance, he took abundance and still abundance remain. So we always believe there's gonna be infinite supply, especially for us. And as long as we can focus on um, 
digging our ditches as long as we can focus on putting in the work mm -hmm. then we just i mean honestly god takes care of the rest so we always every single month get two or three deals in la but we never spend more than a couple grand in marketing in la like our acquisition manager just texts us right now and we got a freaking contract right now in la uh for probably how much bro i think it was it's 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 one of the bigger you know every yeah it's biggest markets like la uh why they're so interesting is we've done I mean, we've done multiple six-figure assignment deals mm -hmm. in LA. And that's the coolest part of being in a market like LA. Now, is LA, LA the only place that we're marketing? Absolutely, positively not. Because no. mm -hmm. we don't bank on, hey, we're going to bring in a six-figure deal every single month or every 60 days, something like that. So, 30, you know, 40, yeah. 50. Like, like, with LA, we're not banking on having a bunch of volume. We're, we're banking on having a large deal size. You know, with other markets like Sacramento we're in, or we're in Dallas, and we're in Central California, Fresno's, and Bakersville's, the whole state, really. Yeah. Uh, we, we, we bank on having volume because those are the average deal sizes are like fifteen to $16,000. Mm -hmm. But with L.A., you know, you only need one of those, and that can make up for it. And so one of the deals could be anywhere from thirty to sixty. Like Nick said, obviously yeah, you have a couple six, six figures. Every, every, I would say every quarter we at least have something over 70 k Yeah. That's very impressive. So... You guys are strictly cold calling then for these deals? For these deals, for LA, yes. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. for cold calling, yeah, absolutely. Okay, so then how much wholesaling are you guys doing right now? So right now we have about 15 deals on the board for this month, mm -hmm. and the goal every single month is to hit anywhere from 20 to 30 deals. Wow, very impressive. Uh, are you guys flipping too or just wholesaling? We're, that, we're, we're, we're primarily wholesaling. Yeah. Um, last year, we did a lot of wholesaling. Mm -hmm. um, however, this year, strategically, we're just saying, hey, like, let's really, really hit it out of the park and get those 20 to 30 deals every single month. And we've been able to employ now, you know, because I believe, you know, we've come pretty damn close, if not mastered the art of cold calling. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, we have we have callers that are strategically in-house. We have callers that are strategically in other countries. We have callers that are strategically th spread throughout the United States. And then we have strategic training platforms that we utilize every single week we have you know scripts in which him and i created um and obviously rebuttals and we have uh, a hiring manager that literally now handles the entire thing a through z mm -hmm. and so we've mastered this this art of cold calling so now we're able to employ all these uh, you know different marketing channels um but you know and we said it you know by strictly utilizing the art of cold calling and mastering it, I mean, made over a million bucks just on that yeah. one specific strategy. And I know a lot of people get, you know, wrapped up in, hey, and I get a bunch of phone calls from investors that want, hey, can I pick your brain? Hey, can I take you, take you out to dinner? Hey, can do you offer training, mentorship? And they kind of, you know, the first conversation is, hey, I'm doing a little bit of PPC. I'm doing a little bit of RVM. I'm doing a little bit of SMS. Hey, I'm going to bring on five cold callers. And I, and in, my, in the back of my mind, <laughs> I'm saying, you know, um, I, I believe in kiss. Keep it keep it simple, right? Mm -hmm. Keep it simple, stupid, right? right? Um, and so, you know, I oftentimes tell people, let's really zone in on maybe one or two and mm -hmm. hit a home run and then start to scale slowly but surely. But right. yeah, cold calling has been the name of the game. Uh, so then what does your organization look like today? So we have, act, so pretty much Nick and I, we just oversee with like a bird's eye view. Mm -hmm. And also shout out to our amazing team. And I know they're probably watching this right now. And um, so we have an amazing transaction coordinator. She handles transactions and dispositions. Mm -hmm. We have an acquisition specialist. We only have one. And she closes up everything. She's been doing amazing. We have a uh, qu quality quality control. Qu quality control. And then he pretty much handles, you want to tell them pretty much about yeah. how like, we have, a, we have a, so we have in-house and then we also have a virtual department. Mm -hmm. So majority of our business is virtual. Some of the key leaders are actually in-house. Quality control, transaction coordinator. Uh, hiring manager. Hiring manager. And then uh, we have we have a couple of seats that that specifically handle things like SMS, specifically handle yeah. things like RBM. Mm -hmm. So it's like we have these these we like basically the core key leaders in house taking care of these systems. And they, then we have a bunch of virtual people working. I don't want to say for them, but they're managing the virtuals mm -hmm. with that specific strategy. Yeah. So so when we have our meetings, you know, we're not necessarily talking to people that I don't want to say. We're talking to the cream of the crop. We're talking mm -hmm. to people that are managing um, the bread and butter of our specific business and of that specific channel. Yeah. And and he was talking about, you know, we have just an amazing team, people that have been with us now for almost, I'd say, two and a half years yeah. since yeah. we've since we've started. We've been in bit. I mean, we've yeah, been partners retention, for three. Retention's pretty. Retention's pretty high. I mm -hmm. think also because I think we have a great, like you just mentioned, like our our, our operation. Uh, I think we have a great. Um, Culture. Culture. Yeah. We have a great right. culture. We keep everybody involved. We go to dinners. We pay everybody freaking well. We have crazy bonuses. Like, 
you, you know, they make good money. So I think it's really good to pay your people and also to have a great culture and also have the positive, high energy type atmosphere. I think that's a big part of it too. I bet you're probably very heavy in that high energy part. Yeah, 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 for sure. Uh, so the acquisition manager, she's handling the 15, 20 transactions. Yeah, ball she's, by herself. She's talking to all these homeowners. On the she, phone. She's locking up deals. She's locking up deals. Yeah. I mean, we have all these obviously sh marketing channels that are happening simultaneously. Mm -hmm. And one of the things for us, and we, if we haven't really mentioned it, is I'm a firm believer, we're a firm believer in marketing basically 24 hours a day, seven days a week, mm -hmm. right? Um, because we talk about wholesaling, we talk about all these different things that have to happen to basically close the deal. But essentially, you know, the wholesaling business is AKA the marketing business, right? Mm -hmm. And we believe if you're marketing damn near 24 hours a day, seven days a week, you're generating leads 24 hours, seven days a week. Um, and then obviously those leads are filtered into our CRM and then our acquisition managers will be able to call those things back. And we sit down with her and have individual meetings uh, once or twice a week and we go deep. We still do to this day role play, listening to recorded calls. How can we get better? How can we uh, become more resourceful in getting back to that homeowner and getting that contract locked up? What do we have to do? Because, uh, you know, we're a firm believer in what by any means necessary. Um, to lock up that specific contract. And I don't care if we have 15 on the board. Well, let's, what do we have to do to get number 16? So you got all these other dialers basically qualifying these leads, yep. funneling into your acquisition person, yep. and then she's closing them on the phone. Yeah. And what do you pay a person like that? She gets paid well. I mean, she made over 10 grand last month. Yeah. And then your callers, they're overseas, in the so country. So we, uh, we have a little bit of both. Okay, we've yeah. been split testing. Mm -hmm. So we have callers that are overseas. We have callers, we, we, we've experimented with the callers in-house. That was our biggest ROI, biggest ROI, callers in-house. But now we wanna get away from having callers in-house. I think we only have like two more callers in-house right now. And majority of the callers are actually in the United States. So we've created a model that we're able to uh, have uh, basically we have virtual meetings virtual call center but everybody's american can speak english knows about the super bowl you know what i mean yeah. it's not like this uh, language barrier it's not mm -hmm. this disconnect so we have majority of the callers in america which are our best like our best caller she's in uh yeah, I think Texas or something Midwest. like that midwest, midwest. something mm -hmm. like that so so that's kind of how we that's kind of how we do it we have we have all three america in house as well as uh overseas, out of overseas. gotcha um, so you were saying she does, you know, she made over 10K. So is it, is it salary plus bonus? Like yeah, it's, 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 so it's, it's base pay, mm -hmm. right? Which, you know, it's base pay plus she gets uh, a bonus if she hits her, uh, contract, 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 contract goal. goal yeah. Plus she gets another, we also have another company bonus that she's, be, that she's able to get, you know, so. Awesome. Yeah. And then who's moving the properties after she locks it up? Our transaction slash dispo girl. Okay, and yeah. you have one of those. And by the way, too, just to let you know, uh, most of the people in our company are women. Yeah. And our, basically, the whole company is like. And they, and they're rock stars. They're ro they're killing. You know, they're they're killing they're, they're rock stars. You know, um, I think a lot of that has to do with how we promote from within. Mm -hmm. um, because essentially everyone at our company that is now at a high level position, Transactions Dispo, which she's a rock star, our acquisition manager who literally, I mean, think about that. Someone that's locking up, you know, 20 deals a month on a consecutive basis and she's hungry, go get her call, works six days a week. Um, you know, once upon a time, they all started entry level, zero real estate experience, and they started in the cold call department. So we've been able, they've been able to evolve over the past two years and, you know, hear the lingo, hear us, you know, back and forth as far as, you know, because once upon a time we were acquisition managers, you know, two years ago, we were dispelling transactions. We were, you know, cold cars. Right we were, hats. we were in, we, we have sat at every <clears throat> seat at our company. Mm -hmm. So when we promote someone or we ask them to do something, we never ask someone to do something that, him, that Octavius and I have never done before. Right. And so we know what it's like to be on the phone for eight hours a day. We know what it's like to you know, do 150 follow-up calls. You know, we know what it's like to send out a bunch, a bunch of emails or send direct mail or get in contact with these staff. We know we've been there, we've done it, so we know how to train, but we also know what they're going through as far as mindset. When yeah. four o'clock hits, we know what they're probably feeling because they've been here <laughs> since you know, the early morning, smiling and dialing. So yeah. I think that, that has to do a lot of our, a lot, that has to do a lot with our team success. Well, I think that makes a lot of sense. And I think a lot of people miss out on that because a lot of people want to shortcut it. They want to hire a caller right away. It's not and if you can't coach a caller because you don't know how to talk to the homeowner, or you've never done it. Right? You've never done it. Even like to take it even bigger, like coaching and also pouring into them. Like yeah. we pour into the people. And I think that kind of is the reason why we have such a high retention rate. 
Yeah. Because we make every person in the company feel, feel special and we compensate them really well. Well, how do you make them feel special? I think that's So you make them feel, feel special by spending time with them and actually being present. Mm -hmm. You know, like if you're with somebody, you're not actually thinking about this, that, 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 but you're actually focused on a person and how can you build that person and take them from here to here? Because I, I believe when somebody's a part of something that they know that they're growing and they're being stretched, they would never want to go by because they know that their potential could be increased Mm -hmm. while they're in this opportunity. So I think we both do a really good job of like sh helping stretch and just grow. And it's crazy because the company, you know, it's a development company, but it's not just like developing real estate, but like we're developing our people and our leaders within our company right. and, and, we're, and we're stretching them. So if anybody's watching and you have a company and you have employees, um, I really would suggest that you guys focus on growing your people from the inside out and not just focus on the numbers. So I think yeah, that's huge. That's really, really yeah. wise. Yeah. Uh, what was it? It was Edwin wanted to know, are you guys locking up deals over the phone <coughs> in markets outside of LA? Sounds like you guys are locking yes. up everything. Over yeah, the phone. yeah. We're, I mean, we're Even in, in LA. We're, yeah. well, I mean, we're locking up deals um, in several different marketplaces. And I'd say about 97% of the deals that we lock up are virtually over the phone. We've never gone to the property. We've never met the buyer. We never met the seller. We never physically had to go into an office and sign documents and things of that nature. I want to leave that 3% there because um, I said earlier on that by any means necessary. So if it takes you getting in your car, and especially if you're brand new, I can see sometimes people say, oh, I, I've had this high level <laughs> company. I'm not going on an appointment. And I get that. But um, we don't necessarily have that philosophy and our, mm -hmm. our acquisitions managers don't have that philosophy. Um, I leave that 3% out there because the last six figure or darn near six figure deal that, that we did um, was because our acquisition manager met the seller at a Denny's, Denny's on a weekend and got the contract signed. Yeah. And not only did she meet him at Denny's and got the contract signed, but we had, he had got kind of cold feet toward the end of the, uh, at the closing table. And you know, we wanted to just make sure that he was comfortable. It was a really big deal. We said, hey, come on into the office. I want, you know, let's, let's sit down with the owner, sit down with Nick, sit down with Octavius. And you know, let's, 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 let's talk. And mm -hmm. he just had a couple little concerns about the tenant, things of that nature, put him at ease, and the deal was closed. It was darn, <clears throat> damn near a six-figure deal. So there's that 3% that's left out there because if you have to drive to lock up a deal, if mm -hmm. you have to go put a envelope in between a door so when they get home, they open the door and it pops out, or you have to go, you know, um, and go do whatever it takes to go mm -hmm. meet that person, go get the deal locked up. Smart. Uh, Brandon wants to know what list are you targeting with your cold callers? That's a really good question. So we get this question a lot and our list, the one that we use, the most highest converting list for us has always, always, always day in, day out have been absentee, high equity, absentee, high equity. And that's literally all we do. Absentee, high equity. An unknown wow. list sometimes, mm -hmm. but absentee, high equity. And we just bang, 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 bang that list all day long. That's it. And That's we got awesome. good data. So, yeah. Where are you getting your good data from? Bulkskipping.com. Bulkskipping. Bulkskipping. I haven't heard yeah. that one. That's really good. Yeah. Hmm. Okay. Um, and then Brandon Maxwell wants to know, are your callers using a script? If so, what does a typical cold call sound like? So we they are using a script. Um, it's basically a script that we created. Man, we created this thing just almost three years ago. Mm -hmm. Sat down and, you know, created it. And we've never changed it since. It's mm -hmm. always worked. Uh, to what does a typical call sound like? Um, hi, is John there? Hey, John, this is Nick. I was actually reaching out to you about the property on 2nd Street here in Compton. I uh, want to see if you'd ever consider selling. And then obviously there's a body to that script based off of what they say, right? Mm -hmm. um, there's rebuttals to that specific script. And the reason why we lock up so many deals and we bring in so many leads via cold calling is because the training that we employ with our cold call weekly, team. Weekly training. Um, and sometimes we do, you know, um, we, we have a quality control guy that manages them um, to the T, meaning we are constantly <coughs> reviewing calls. We're constantly growing our cold callers. Some people think that it's, you know, I've, I've, I've seen people, I know people that throw money and they just let them go. Oh my gosh. And <laughs> you're basically throwing money yeah. and letting it go down the drain. Yeah. As to where we built a system that uh, we know exactly what's happening, how many leads we're generating, and the quality of those specific conversations. So I'll tell you this. I've gotten, I've gotten calls from people, credit card companies, and number one, I feel skeptical. Number two, I don't know who you are. Number three, how'd you get my number? Number four, why do you have an accent, right? <laughs> yeah. And what do you do when someone calls you like that? Up, oh, gotta go, bye, click, mm -hmm. right? 
But if you can sound sophisticated, sound somewhat intelligent, sound somewhat you know business savvy, and can ask and can and can grasp a couple basic basic information, and then that that can possibly you know um, give us the idea of hey whether they're interested or not, and you know what you're talking about, it's going to open up that line of communication. So many people are actually interested in selling. But they're so skeptical because you sounded so sketch on the phone that they're closed off and I don't want to give you any more information instead. Well, I think that's just skeptical because of that, though. I think that's very, very much true. But even right now, like, there's a high volume of cold calls. So how do you even sound different than everybody else? Very true. Very true. Uh, I'll, I'll, I, 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 you want to take this? We can. So, number one, um, you got to be calling way more. you got to be talking to more people than, than the next guy. Mm-hmm. Next guy buys houses. If you're talking to more people, it's all a numbers game. By law, by numbers law, you're going to get more leads if you're mm-hmm. just talking to more people. And number two, we don't put our callers on the phone unless they've had the two-week intensive training. And then also we pull a f- like f- like 15 calls a day per caller. I mean, we have training. Uh, so, so they're not going to get on the phone unless they sound high level. So the difference, you could put our caller up against anybody, any of our callers up against anybody's callers in the country, and we're going to win, and we're going to get that comfort. Every single time. Every single time. Without a shot of a doubt. Every single time. I love Just it. Just because they're good. I mean, you get, uh, trust me, they're good. Um, how many total, total cold callers do you guys have? So we have a total. I mean, I, that number actually varies uh, because we're always hiring. Mm-hmm. We're, I mean, we I mean, we have every single Monday, I sit down with our hiring manager, and we go over how many people we want to hire that specific week. And it's just, it's funny you bring this up uh, be simply because we've actually, you know, our onboarding process was once upon a time 14 days. And then we, we, we made it 10 days. And then we condensed it into now we can train a cold caller, get them on the phone in literally around 72 hours because of a training system in which we've created and specific videos and things of that nature and how good our hiring managers and really getting them ready to rock and roll. We also know how to, how to after 72 hours, like we've done this in the past, after we pull 10, 15 calls, we take them right off the dollar and we do a little bit more training for two more days mm-hmm. and then get them back on the Like I know a lot of, like we're very meticulous on exactly how, you know, we make sure that they're up to speed and we make sure that their 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 quality is at a high level so that we don't waste any leads, man, you know? What program are you guys using for, for training? Call tools. What are you talking that's about? Our, that's for, our dollar. The, the, the video, where so, are you guys hosting your videos? So um, those videos In are house. all myself, and the hiring manager, yeah. um, we made those videos on literally pull it up on a screen recorder and a video. And we went in for, you know, there's some videos that are two minutes and there's some videos that are 35 minutes. And we break down step by step by step by step by step by step on what you should sound, li- sound like, what to expect. And it's very, very um, systematic. It's strategic, but um, it's in a way where it's we make it as simple as possible. So yeah. that training platform, um, is just videos that we created yeah. um, and a lot, a lot of recorded calls, breaking down recorded calls to the T. Like, we'll give you some value. So um, <clears throat> one of the things that we do in the training when somebody just on boards is this thing called the repetition training. Nick always says, you always say, what's that quote you always say? The, the mother Repeti- of- repetition, is, repetition is the mother of all skills. So we mm-hmm. do this thing. Um, we go line by line by line by line item. And then so we go item number one, highest done there, highest done there, highest done there, highest done there. Item number two, and then we do it really quickly. So every single line item on the script, we have them repeated a hundred times and we have a check mark. Then we give them a grade and then if they pass and we move them on to the next part of the training. So we kind of have everything, you know, uh, thoroughly put out to make Sounds sure that, every, that everybody's it, up to talk. It could be intense. You it know, could be, and in the Filipinos, I mean, you know, the, 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 the out of the, uh, we train the Americans yeah. just like we train the in-house, just like we train the out of the country ones. Yeah. So. Uh, Brian Davila wants to know what markets are you guys in and what's your best market? Uh, best market will be LA. That's, that's, you know, and I, the only reason why I say that is because every single time I say every, and I say this kind of loosely, it just so happens because when you're constantly marketing Mm -hmm. consistently at a high level, you're going to get home runs, you know, and we don't bank on home runs. Uh, we don't pray for home runs, home runs. We kind of, I want to say attract them, but when you're consistently marketing, you're consistently generating leads then you expect a certain amount of deals every single month. Yeah. And we and now it's it's we built it to a point where and our acquisition manager is so man just on point with numbers and, and running comps and negotiations and things of that nature. Um, the you know, we've done yeah, the whales have almost become predictable. We're bringing in, you know, we're doing a six figure deal. I wanna say every like, quarter. you know, ninety days, every ninety days, something like a six figure deal will pop up. 
Okay. It just so happens we probably have two on the board. And now. it might not just be like, okay, it might be like an 80 or 70 or 103, but it's just, it's it's more than 70K every single four months we or three months we normally, for sure. Now so like, something like that, what's the typical price point? <sighs> We've done, we had them in $300,000. So maybe mm-hmm. we'll get it for 300, the ARV's 500 something. Mm-hmm. And we let it go for 390 or 410 or something like that. Mm-hmm. We've gotten them for the ARV's or 600. It, they're not million dollar homes. Right. You know, but obviously they're not hundred thousand dollar homes either. Yeah. So. Okay. Uh, and then Victor wants to know how are you guys making sure the numbers are right if you're not seeing the properties. Uh, we've d- developed a pretty simple formula, but um, we oftentimes get people inside of the property pictures. Mm-hmm. Right. We get pictures, <clears throat> um, and lots of market research comes into um, coming up with offers. Okay. Yeah. Um, you know, our acquisition manager is extremely, extremely thorough with where she needs to be. Um, and she's always uh, late. I mean, she's always on point. First of all, but second of all, we always have boots on the ground. We get somebody inside to physically take pictures of the property. But you don't do that until after you lock it up. After we lock it up. Well, it just sometimes. Uh, and it varies. Yeah, it, varies. it just varies. Because yeah. if it's a super big deal, like we'll send somebody out to go get pictures. Before the contract. Before the event. contract. Yeah. Uh, Carlos Reyes says, "What's up, bunch yo, yo, of hustlers, what's going on, legends in the room." Hey, hey, Carlos, man, we was just we were just talking about hey, your we need a pinky yeah, ring, man. We were just talking about your pinky ring, man. <laughs> <laughs> she was saying you were hitting the desk too hard, man. I said it's because of that pinky ring, Carlos Reyes, man. <laughs> Think ways of time. Uh, Samir wants to know, are you guys doing RVMs? Yes, we we not as much as SMM or SMS, but we do it here and there. Yeah. Uh, Brandon Vega wants to know, do you guys have any? You guys do a lot of intentionally outbound. Are you guys? Do you guys have any inbound systems? Yeah. Yeah. What would that be? It's the same thing. It's all on the same platform. But I mean, like, do you guys have, like, billboards? Direct oh, mail? no, no. We don't do any of that. Okay. Um, and then ballpark number of, of cold callers. I know you guys are higher. 20. Higher. 20. Two zero. Yeah, ballpark 20. And I would say it just depends on your, your company goals, mm-hmm. right? Um, because you, I could easily, you know, people could easily have 40. Okay, great. I have 40 cold callers. But let me ask you this. What, what level of competence do they have and what what efficiency are there and what processes systems do you have to monitor these people and are, do they, what do they actually sound like? Yeah. Because would you rather have 40 cold callers that are less than mediocre or have 15 that are calling eight hours a day, have intelligent conversations, know when the Super Bowl is and are producing leads that, are, you know, know how to talk, level, yeah. right? Yeah. So I'd rather take the 15 than the 40, right? And those 15, how many dials are they expecting making the eight hours? Um, you know, we, we don't base it off of the necessarily the amount of dials. We just base it off this. We base it off of the amount of time that they're actually specifically working. And so also if someone's how many leads? How yeah, many if, leads if someone's start? working an hour and they're on the phone and obviously they're 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 on point, um, then we we expect a certain amount of leads. Mm-hmm. You know, per hour, not necessarily per call, because you know you know sometimes you don't they don't pick up right. Sometimes yeah. you know so it just varies. But we expect a certain amount of leads per hour per caller. And that's time minus wait time and minus uh, disposition time. So that's actually talk time. So a certain mm-hmm. amount of leads per talk time that we have. Gotcha. Uh, Anthony Guzman wants to know how you're paying the cold callers. Hourly, the majority of them are, are hourly and it varies based off, off of experience, mm-hmm. based off of, you know, we always set it to, to where we can always increase that specific um, that specific wage. So we, so we may start them at X, but then because they're producing at a constant level, you know, we can always increase that particular pay based mm-hmm. off of production. It's just like any other position. But a lot of people take this like, hey, they're just, you know, a couple dollars an hour, this and that. Well, you shoot them a couple dollars an hour, then you're going to get a couple dollars an hour results. That's it. Right? Right. All day long. So we always set it to where uh, we can always increase that specific amount based off of production, right? Mm-hmm. Based off of the numbers. So then like what are, what's the like, entry level and what's the top range? Uh, I mean, it just depends on where they're from. I mean, mm-hmm. it, and depends on where they're located throughout the United States, right? Because minimum wage is different in different parts of the country. So mm-hmm. you have to research that. Um, and obviously, if you're doing stuff in the Philippines, you're doing stuff in Mexico, you're doing stuff in, um, I forget the other Egypt. one, Egypt, right? Then you can really make that stuff up, right? Mm-hmm. I know people that have, I, I know, <laughs> we don't pay our callers, but I know people that pay callers three bucks an hour. Yeah. And, you know, they're getting X, but then I, they're in the Philippines. And I know people, you know, we have, you know, some Filipinos as well. And we pay them more than three bucks an hour, yeah. right? But it's all about the results. Gotcha. Okay. Uh, so Keith is asking, how many deals a month you guys are doing? How many? Uh, you guys, you said you're doing between fifteen to twenty. Yeah. yeah. Consi- cons- consistently. Cons- the biggest thing is consistently. Our goal is to ramp up to thirty. So I believe when we add this new marketing channel, I think that's gonna help us out a lot. What are your favorite business books? Hmm. Nick, you want to go first? Man, I'll keep it very simple. Um, think and grow rich as far as just mindset, as far as just something that I 
con- I consistently try and read. Um, I don't want to say every single day, but every single week. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think the biggest business book that that help us helped us to scale to the magnitude that we're at when it comes to systems, processes, procedures is traction. Yeah, traction. Right. Uh, without serious. a question, but I remember the day that we were doing. I think we were doing one to three deals a month. This was man. A lot, I mean, I say within. I think our first six months, we we're doing one to three deals a month, trying to figure it out. And we're sitting in a WeWork, and Octavia says, he he comes into the office, and he slaps down this book, Traction. Mm-hmm. And he goes, we're diving into this thing, and we're not leaving until we get it all figured out. Systems, yeah. processes, procedures, X, Y, Z, what are you in charge of? What are you doing? What am I doing? And Octavius is more the visionary. I'm more the integrator. And then he handles specific things, and he just kicks ass at those specific things. I handle specific things. I kick ass at those things, and then we just put them together. So traction, without a question of a doubt, um, really just propelled us and got <clears throat> us systematically um, functioning at a high level. Yeah, it's amazing. Time. I want to say every successful wholesaler swears by that book. Yeah, traction, huh? It's yeah. an amazing book. It's a meaty book too. You gotta, you gotta keep looking at it. I, I would say for me, it'd be more like mindset stuff instead mm-hmm. of business stuff, because I feel like the biggest challenge is getting over yourself. Yeah. And also giving over the limited beliefs that you believe that you can believe that you can actually go from one deals to ten deals a month, or from mm-hmm. ten deals to twenty, or from twenty to thirty, and actually make go from a hundred thousand to three hundred thousand dollars a month, or go from ten to a hundred thousand dollars a month. So I spent a lot of money and a lot of material on getting over just limiting beliefs in my mind to shift so that I can be able to be put myself in a position to kind of receive the you know all the things that I want. So and and I believe again if you're watching this. The biggest investment is the investment that you can make in yourself without a shadow of a doubt. A hundred percent. Carlos wants to know where you're getting that, where you get your suits from. We got a, we got a personal, <laughs> Carlos, shoot us a DM, but we got a, we got a personal guy uh, that we get our suits from, man, <laughs> and we can hook you up. You know, we got you. Yeah, but, but a, as you grow your empire, um, the custom suit game will become an addiction. Yeah. It will. And I'm not <laughs> saying that we have 50 custom suits because we don't. But colors will become an addiction, and pinky rings will become an addiction. Everything becomes an addiction, <laughs> right? Cars, yeah. all that stuff. Uh, so who's in charge of KPIs? I'd say Octavius handles I'd say both, though, honestly, because, like, I don't do KPIs for sales. Mm-hmm. You know, he handles the KPIs for sales. I handle the KPIs for, like, marketing and things like that. Oh, how much we're going to spend in marketing this month? 20 grand, 30 grand, what is it going to be? Um, True. You know, how many people we need to bring on hire? We kind of just sit together you know, shoot the crap for a little bit. And then next thing you know, we have this big game plan on what we need to do for the next week. And we just take it week by week by week. We're not all technical, like, oh, the numbers, this, that, and the third, da, 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 da. We just kind of like, oh, you think we should do like this? We'll look this, 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 and then boom, we just go like that. So you say 20, 30 grand a month. Yeah. In, in marketing, where does that go? Yeah, so most of it, most of it goes to uh, data, man. Yeah. Most of it goes to data. Okay. So like we, we, we get, you know, obviously, you know, you, you get the list, list source, we go to bulk skipping, we get that. And we, and then we also have payroll that we have to pay. Mm-hmm. So most of it goes to like data and then also payroll. And that doesn't include like the, the, the commissions or anything like that, but yeah, that's like, yeah. So how do you guys disposition a property? You that's a question that I've been you? getting a lot that. I, I <clears> so we use, that. what's it? You want to tell them? Uh, what, what is it? USA? USA. USA buyers list. USA buyers list. Yeah. Um, I think you just shot a video on this. I literally, if, if, if you guys go to at millennial flippers on Instagram, I literally just put up a video on how to dispos like literally step by step, how to disposition your, uh, how to build your cash buyers list. So go to USA buyers You get the list. Once you get the list, you want to go search all the LLCs. So I think it's like three or more LLCs or yep. th- uh, the LLCs have purchased three or more properties in the last six to 12 months. Mm-hmm. So you take that LLC and then you put it into like open corporates or they're like 10 other companies, right? You can even Google the LLC. And then you go to the state, uh, like the state government office that show you what what principal Mm -hmm. is the owner of the LLC. And then what you want to do is skip trace that person using then verified or even put them on Facebook. And then when you find that person, reach out to them or you could just mail the list and then the people call you back. And and the process is like And I'll add to that because um, we treat obviously that aspect of the business um, like any other aspect. It's obviously just one of the most important, you know, um, one of one of the important uh, you know, classes within your organization, whatever you want to call it, within your company. 
And so we train our transaction and dispo managers just like anybody else because she's having these high level conversations with yeah. investors, right? Yeah. Uh, we always joke not to become a CBE, a cash uh, buyer employee. employee. So our, you know, our transaction dispo manager, she's able to really um, share so much value and she knows exactly what's taking place in that marketplace, exactly what investors are doing, exactly what investors are paying. So she's able to have these high level intelligent conversations. Oftentimes you'll do so many, you'll do so many deals with this particular investor that they become kind of, hey, I'm going to always get to get it at this specific price, and that's not the case. Give us a discount right? on this one. And so, yeah. Hook us up. Yeah, and so, you know, our transaction, Dispo Girl, she is just such a beast at, um, at number one, she knows the game. Number two, right. she can have these high-level conversations. Number three, um, she's a force to be reckoned with, right? <laughs> she is a force to be reckoned with, and, we, and you know, we're always pushing her to increase um, that profit margin because we know without <coughs> question of doubt that that investor is going to hit a home run. You wouldn't be buying it if it wasn't a home run. Mm -hmm. And we're very transparent on what's happening with the property. We don't hide anything from our buyers. Um, and oftentimes we want to build a great relationship. So um, our transaction and dispo, uh, she's a rock star and she can, and we trained her over the past two years to have those rock star conversations. So she's a boss. Oh yeah, and also we don't double close when it's a big deal. A lot of people ask little questions like, hey, if it's a big assignment, <laughs> like over 50 grand, are you gonna do a double escrow? And like we just do an assignment, man. Whether yeah. it's 50, 100,000 or 5,000, like the buyer should understand that um, don't count our chips, you know, you're gonna be making money on this deal too, right? Right. So let's get the transparency, you know, transparency. Transparency. Have honestly, you had someone blow you up because of it? Never, never. We've, we've had some people raise their eyebrows like, oh, it's the first time doing business, you guys gonna make $70,000 on this deal? And you know, we're like, hey man, listen, we're gonna, we, we've done, done X amount of deal. You, you gotta sell them on why it's okay for us to right. receive the money. Cause I like people, they just, they, you wanna count your chips, but after See, we have that initial conversation, they don't have any problem. You guys are very nice, I just blacklist them. Really? <laughs> <laughs> I get the hell off my list. I'm never yeah, talking yeah, to you yeah. again. Thug yeah. life. Uh, I mean, it's it's like you say, right? Why are you counting my chips? Yeah, why are you right, counting exactly. my right? chips? Were you not making money in this deal? Oh, or, or, or they're trying to take your chips away at the end of the, at, at the closing yeah. table, right? We've, right? we've done through that. And, like, just, which is fine and just be careful. Yeah. You know, just be careful with that, especially if you're brand new. You know, and um, I tell our people, we're always emotionally invested, but we're never emotionally attached to any given deal. Mm -hmm. Because if you're brand new, and you're, you know, and you have one or two deals on the board, uh, most invested, never most attached because things happen that right. are out of your control, title issues, you know, all these, you know, different scenarios, cold fee, um, just this, you know, we've had child support liens and from 1970s, just a crazy stuff will happen as to that is completely out of your control. The best way to overcome that emotionally invested and, and, to, and not become emotionally attached is to have more deals. Right. You have mm -hmm. 20, 30 deals on the board, 10 deals on the board and one goes away. OK, what? That's, you know, 10 percent of your inventory that's on the board. Right? right. But if you have two deals on the board, that's 50 percent of your inventory. If just one goes away. Yeah, no, it's a much, much bigger problem if you only got one or two deals on yeah. the board. Scary. Yeah. Scary. Uh, Victor wants to know, does your seller know how much you're assigning it for? No. In the state of California, you do not have to let uh, uh, you do not have to reveal how much you're assigning it for. But we are up, uh, honest and upfront. Let the seller know, hey, we're going to be assigning this one. Mm -hmm. So. Okay, uh, so John Gage wants to know, as far as negotiating down sellers, like how do you guys get them get it at a price that makes sense for you guys? <sighs> That's a good question. Sometimes we have to lock it up high, and then sometimes we have to go in and even pay for a termite inspection just to get the property down a little bit lower, mm -hmm. you know. But then sometimes it works because then we can just find somebody who wants to pay more than what we got it under contract for. Uh, but it, it normally always ends up working out. Like we wouldn't lock it up if we didn't know if it was gonna meet our criteria or yeah. we didn't know if we could get a price reduction or we didn't know if we were going to have a hard time selling it. So we normally don't run into those problems anymore. Mm -hmm. I mean, every once in a while, like if we go to a new zip code or a new area, we might run into it, but we don't, we don't run into that too much anymore. So are you guys actively looking to get, uh, get into other markets? We have plans. We have plans and preparation to move to other markets, but you know, we, we, we still have to finish the first plan yeah. and start it. You What's know the what first I mean? plan? So the first plan is doing more in California and doing more in our backyard and mm -hmm. expanding more and then implementing another marketing channel, which is the PPC. We're going to start doing that. So like before we start jumping around and jumping all crazy, we like to take our time, move mm -hmm. to another one. Because we I mean, we want to be in the business 20, 30, 40 years. This is not six months, 12 months, a year, year and a half. Yeah. You know, this is long term. So let's take our time. Let's 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 build a, build a strong foundation and then Absolutely. we're going to blossom all the way up. That's our goal. Strategy, strategy, strategy. We know these markets like literally our backyards. 
And to kind of just piggyback on that question, because I know that that we get, we I get that question so many times. Hey, how do you negotiate with a specific seller and get them to a price that makes sense, or how do you get a, a price reduction? And number one, everyone's different, mm-hmm. right? Um, and I tell people, you know, when you're having these conversations or building rapport, well, if the seller likes the Lakers, well, what do you like? Do you? Like the Lakers, right? Love, love Kobe, right? Love, right? <laughs> right. Love and, whoever's and over there right if now. If they like, if they like, <laughs> if they happen to like blue, then you happen to like blue. Yeah. So you know, th- there's obviously so many different strategies, and I can't. I'm actually going to sit here and give you this one liner to get the best price reduction. Mm-hmm. A lot of it's going to come from experience. A lot of it's going to come from just getting in the game. Um, How you say it, and all, and then the other part's going to know from knowing your numbers, right? Our our our. Um, <clears throat> Our, our marketing and the markets that we're in, essentially we know our numbers. We know like the back of our hand because we've done so many deals. So we know exactly the price that we need to be at to make that thing work. Gotcha. Uh, JT wants to know, uh, where are you guys finding success in building your team? Headhunter or Inner Circle? How are you finding people? So um, our philosophy, and everybody in the company knows this, is that it's a company like Amazon, like Google, it's a company. Mm-hmm. And people have positions in the company. And our whole goal is just to build up the people in their individual seats and build them internally out. So as long as you're building somebody from the inside out and you're giving them value more than just a paycheck, then they're going to stay. So if you just focus on one position at a time and you focus on increasing them, making them more, having them leave every single day a little bit more than where they came, right, then you won't have any problem building a company. Mm-hmm. Building a company. That's great for retention. What about <clears throat> for recruiting? So recruiting, we go hard. I mean, we do Facebook ads, we do Craigslist, we do Instagram ads. We just tap, we, we uh, tap root our warm market. Hey, do you know anybody? You know anybody who needs a job? Hey, do you know anybody who needs a job? We ask everybody. We've even hired pe- our bartenders. We've hired waiters. We've hired everybody. We, we've. If you're looking for an opportunity, and you're, we had a guy. I'll, I'll share with you a little story here. I think I share. I might have shared it on another so on, on my Instagram. Um, we had a guy who called the office and said, I'm outside of your office. <laughs> and um, this was on like a weekend. So I think it was like late Saturday afternoon. No, no one was there. Um, and then I said, how fast? I, I, I remember I called, he, I said, call me Monday. He calls me back on Monday. He says, hey, um, I really, you know, just selling me on why he should come in and, and work for us. And I said, okay, um, I have an hour. How fast can you get here? And he says, 15 minutes, I'm on my way comes into the office, dressed to impress. Um, he just knew a little bit about us. He knew a little bit about the business. He didn't know about real estate, but he was hungry, ambitious, motivated. And we basically brought him in on the spot, felt a good vibe about him. And now Huge. he is, now he's handling um, our, S, you know, our SMS. He's taking live calls. I mean, this guy is adding value instantaneously. Mm-hmm. Why? Because he went above and beyond what the normal person would do um, when applying for a high level position. Because at right. the end of the day, I'll tell everybody who's watching this, we're always looking for talented people, okay? Um, and it's your job to put yourself around the right people, the right environment, and really do whatever it takes to get a chance at a high level position. So yeah. if it takes, you know, if you're if you're a guy or girl out there and you're young to the business and you want to make money, you want to get started, you want to be a part of this or any company out there, well, guess what? You're going to have to pay the price a little bit. Yep. You're going to have to work weekends. Um, but <clears> I promise <throat> you this, every high level investor out there will tell you this, it is 1000 million percent worth it. So mm-hmm. hustle. And speaking of that, man, I mean, if you guys, if you're watching this and, you know, you're working with a group and you're making less than $5,000 a month, but you know you have what it takes, you're a closer, you can get the job done. Uh, we are hiring at this moment. Email German at Devalier, D-E-V-A-L-L-E, development.com. German at Devalier. Send them a video resume, and then we can see if we can get the process started for you and give you an opportunity. Uh, JT wants to know what's your cost per lead between SoCal and Sacramento. We don't know, man. We really don't know. Uh, what are some like CRM tools or systems that you guys cannot run your operations? <clears throat> we use Podio. Uh, mm-hmm. We also use t- was it Time? What was it called? Time Doctor. Time Doctor is, is a great tool that we utilize to monitor everybody that's working outside of the office. Mm-hmm. Um, it allows you the ability. There's just so many different features you can kind of play with. So you kind of have to go and you know there's like a YouTube tutorial. Time Doctor. Uh, I think it's like ten bucks a month, so it's extremely per seat. But it basically, uh, you know, allows you to track mouse movements, keyboard strokes, screenshots, however you want to kind of play with those particular features. Yeah. But 
but um, it's a tool that we utilize and it keeps everybody just accountable. Mm-hmm. We're firm believers in um, you know working your butt off. We're firm believers in fair pay. We're firm believers in being good to anybody that's a part of our company, employee with us, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So it's just something that we can utilize as just an extra um, way to make sure that everybody is on the same page. Because if you don't want to be a part of, you know, any company or our company, uh-huh. then we don't. You know, yeah. we're just going to part ways respectfully. Yeah. And we haven't. We really haven't had any issues. Um, you know, luckily because we've just have attracted great people yeah. into our lives. Anything else? Any other tools or systems? I'm sure it is. What can we think of? Call platform. Call. We use. We use call. To, we have a. If if you got. If anybody wants call tools, we have a a, a link where you can waive your fee. Mm-hmm. Uh, I gotta talk to a guy named James, but just shoot us a shoot us a DM at Millennial Flippers. Mm-hmm. And I'm sure you're probably gonna put it in the thing. Yep. Just shoot us a DM and put hook us up on the call platform and we'll make sure it's way for you. Yeah. And and then also bulkscaping.com. Yeah. Um is just I mean they've been so great to us and got us the best rates imaginable consistently. Um I mean literally 7 to 10 phone numbers <coughs> and we've accuracy is always on point. So they've been great to us. I would check them out as well. 100%. Awesome. Uh what is your why? My why is to impact people emotionally, spiritually, mentally and um help people be a greater version of themselves and also help people uh, move away from their hurt and then elevate to a higher level of living internally. That's my, that's my whole mission and goal. Yeah, I'd say to, to obviously number one is build wealth through real estate. Mm-hmm. And then number two, to teach people how to utilize this industry to really get after what they truly want to become and or uh, migrate to. Because I often tell people, well, if you want to, uh, fortunately, you know, build, um, if you want to, you know, build houses in Africa or whatever it is, you're gonna need income Mm -hmm. to be able to do that, right? So let's build income and wealth through real estate so you can really make a huge impact. You know, if you wanna get back to your parents, well, let's build income through this amazing industry um, that's created so many millionaires and multimillionaires and billionaires to be able to get back to your parents and pay off their mortgage or, you know, buy your dad a car or whatever it may be. And so now, because we've got our business to such a high level as far as production, you know, we have a passion now, you know, to be able to teach people how to utilize these systems, processes, procedures, and and create wealth through real estate to really get after what they really want. Because if you want to become an actor, model, singer, dancer, you need what? You need time, Mm -hmm. right, to be able to do that. And usually time means you got to have some money saved away in the bank to eat <clears throat> whatever it is you want to do. So right. I think now we, I mean, a passion has become being able to bless others and teach them how to use this industry um, as a tool to really get to where they want to be. Because maybe you don't want to be a real estate, uh, uh, you know, a high level investor, but maybe if you made an extra two or three hundred thousand dollars by wholesaling 10 or 15 houses a year, yeah. what could you do with, you know, a hundred thousand, an extra hundred thousand dollars a year? Right, it's almost nothing you can't do. And yeah, to, right. And to be honest, Steve, just to piggyback on what he's saying, because we have like obviously that's why we created the Millennial Flippers because we're like, yo, there's so many people out here that are teaching this information, and it's just too dang on complicated. Like I know you asked me about what's your KPI, <laughs> and I know it's like I don't know, but I'm not being like facetious or anything like that. But I really don't know. We only track like two or three metrics, mm-hmm. you know, and one of them is uh, average deal size. Another one is um, leads per deal, and we got like one other one, but. We keep everything so simple, so simple. I dropped out of college, he has his degree. I'm not super, super, super smart. He's not super, super, super smart, you know? And we just like to keep things super, super simple so that we can take action fast. I feel like uh, when it's so much information, people get stuck before they start. They stop before they start. Mm -hmm. They can't even start because they're just so overwhelmed. And so our goal is just to simplify the process Right, like we made our first million bucks with only one marketing channel. We made our million bucks with only one list yeah. type. We made our first million bucks with only one market, and mm-hmm. it's super simple. Over analysis oftentimes leads to paralysis. Wow. Yeah, and so many people get so wrapped up in, I gotta get my podio right, <laughs> right? I gotta get, I gotta get oh three or four marketing channels, you know, going at the same time. I got to go from two cold callers to 15 cold callers overnight, right? Mm -hmm. But imagine getting started in the business and then just being able to do, you know, if you're brand new out there, paint, you know, hopefully this this will paint a picture in your brain. If you're able to just learn maybe one strategy and and really master that specific strategy, maybe do one or two deals and maybe you're a one or two man show and make an extra 10 to $20,000 a month. Let's just dumb it down to an extra ten thousand dollars a month using mm-hmm. one simple strategy, you know, using utilizing one list, and but effectively really hitting it home and doing one deal a month, 
and let's just say an average of seven ten thousand. What would an extra seven to ten thousand dollars a month do for you? It's empowering. Right. And yeah. then secondly, now I'm assuming everyone out there is a go getter and wants to really start to build their business. Well, that's now we can talk about scaling. Now we can talk about you know more cold callers. Now we can talk about more marketing. Now we can talk about more systems, processes, procedures. But we're firm believers in keep it simple, um, and really um, you utilize what's working right mm -hmm. and, and hit a home run. That's brilliant. Uh, what is you guys' biggest struggle right now? Uh, biggest struggle. I'll say finding a moving company, man. <laughs> <laughs> We're moving to offices right now. I hate, we hate doing like the little stuff, the little tedious stuff. Mm -hmm. 100%. And so, man, finding a moving company, making sure we have everything right and this little piece and this little piece. And a handyman. Like, oh finding, God, a, finding, finding a, a handyman. It's like, we got to fly out to Phoenix to go do this. And we got to do that. And then it's just... Take and care of all the little stuff. It's just, man. it's just the little. And someone's out there's gonna say, well, "Why don't you just hire an assistant?" Great. Okay, we know we need to hire an assistant and everything like that. But it's just like, <laughs> it's just, it's just, it's just we're we're, we're moving the, moving offices, and really we're so blessed and so fortunate and so grateful. But yeah, that's the biggest struggle is finding a solid moving company. We need a handyman to mount the TV sets and put up the whiteboards and. And you know, and then the internet was a big issue. I don't oh even want to get into goodness. that. And you know, the, you know the you know the automated dialers, right? Mm -hmm. The little automated. We hate those things. Man. Yeah. Goodness. I, yeah. The little internet and all that. That's yeah. that's the biggest. And unfortunately, uh, yeah, I don't want to get into that. So yeah, moving. So a couple of these guys are asking, you know, what is <coughs> your, um, what is your profitability? Like, do you know, like, of you know, for every hundred thousand that comes in, do you know what? Yeah. You get oh yeah. Yeah. So we're. Um, it fluctuates between 70 to 75% yeah. profit. Yeah. Yeah. It's really good. I mean, that's the great thing about wholesale, right? It's yeah. super high margins. Uh, what is your superpower? Let's start with you. I would say my ability to connect to people mm -hmm. on a level and to be to be able to know where they're at energetically wise and to be able to help them be a higher version of themselves. I can do that instantly. I've done that instantly. And I feel like it's kind of a blessing because I'll be in the middle of nowhere and I'll see somebody down. And then I can just help them get up a little bit. I think that's like one of my superpowers. So how does that relate to business? It relates to that in business because I'm able to impact, like for example, uh, shout out to the team, but uh, my acquisition specialist, our acquisition specialist, we go on walks every single day and we do these little things that I learned from my hypnotist, Dr. Pratt. And we do these things and I'm able to help her and impact her. And honestly, it has changed her life tremendously. I started these calls where I said, you know what? I, I need to impact more people. I want to help more people. So I have these calls of, and I'm really big about my community. So African-Americans, so I have a call of about 10 African-American business owners. And um, we're on the call every single morning at 4.45 a.m. And my goal is just to help them, impact them, connect with them, lift them up. And um, it's just another layer of accountability for everybody. And I think that's one of my biggest superpowers is that I can give people the spark they need to take massive action and be a higher version of themselves. I love it. Yeah. What about you? Um, I'd say just my ability to impact and empower people to do things that they thought were once impossible and really bring those to reality. A lot of it has to do with our business. Um, a lot of it has to do with now our students in which we coach one-on-one. <coughs> -on -one. Um, a lot of that has to do with just things that are happening outside of business and just, I want to call it the real world. Um, to be able to just share either whether whether it's a business that you can utilize to be able to put yourself in a better position or whether um, it's, it's the ability to just push yourself, whether it's in the gym or whether it's financially, emotionally, spiritually, whatever it is, um, to just impact people to do more, become more, and ultimately, um, you know, accomplish more than what they ever thought was imagined. Well, I think a lot of this has to came from what I did in the network marketing business. I mean, mm -hmm. I was just a wrecking ball in that business, meaning I was traveling all over the country <laughs> and I was, you know, speaking on stages. I was, you know, in, you know, sharing this product and system with people. And now I kind of see the fruits of that, you know, coming to, I see the fruits of that work three years ago because I know people that are not in the network marketing business, mm -hmm. but they're killing it. Um, and I get so many calls and texts and from people and relationships were built saying, you know what, man, Nick, I remember when you were speaking on stage that day, when you were at this small meeting this day, or you, were, you said this to me off to the side, and now I'm doing X, Y, and Z. And I'm so grateful, so thankful. The network marketing didn't work out for me. <laughs> but what I learned there and what you yeah. taught there and what you stood by there has stayed with me forever. And that's why we're so passionate about not only just, you know, our real estate wholesaling company and mm -hmm. getting that to a magnitude in which, you know, uh, you know, we've dreamt about and our vision, you know, is coming, you know, to reality. We're living but, but 
now it's migrating to just showing people how to use the wholesaling business, the flipping business, the whole, you know, um, and, and, and really just going above and beyond for our coaching clients. Uh, because I know without a question that when they come to our office and we're sitting down and we're breaking <coughs> down systems, processes, and, we're, and they're just, their eyes are just like, it's, it's simple. I can do this and I can do that. And I understand. And they can see our boards, see our processes, see our systems. I mean, it just, there's no better feeling than somebody else winning. Um, and you, sh you know, kind of being that guide, that tour guide, yeah. showing them, you know, the way. That's incredibly powerful. Uh, so, guys, don't forget, we are still giving shirts away. So follow me on Instagram, Steve.Trang. There's a post about two weeks ago. There's a post there about how to get the free Real Estate Disruptors t-shirt. And then Tuesday, we've got Haim flying in. I really don't know where he flies in from because <laughs> the guy lives around the world. If you follow him on Facebook, he's always in some me other too. country. Nice. So uh, he's coming on Tuesday, the virtual wholesaler. And on Wednesday, we got Brett Marino and Adam Johnson coming in from Mississippi. So, uh, guys, any last message you um, want to leave the listeners I'll, with? I'll share um, one, one little quick announcement. Um, I, we actually put together a, a dinner for some investors in L.A. this mm -hmm. past Friday. Um, I think it was like maybe six to – it was like maybe seven or to ten yeah, people yeah. there. Top the people, guys. You know, it's just some top guys that were doing, um, you know – we said about half a million dollars plus per year. Uh, one of the biggest topics that came up at this at this dinner was just the lack of meetup groups and the lack of just, you know, a place where people can gather and then just mastermind for free. No, you know, charging and things like just a, a place where once a month guys, guys and girls of all levels of, of um, real estate can get together where you're a novice or a high level guy and just share the tricks of the trade. Mm -hmm. And so um, if you're watching this, um, you know, make sure you follow myself, Nick.Lovano on Instagram, or I'm sure you'll tag us, Octavius mm -hmm. uh, Bennett on Instagram. Uh, we're going to be, you know, putting together a free meetup group uh, middle to probably end of June um, in Los Angeles somewhere. Everyone's invited. It's a completely free event. And it's going to be, we're going to have a bunch of different high level guys there um, and probably do some type of just like Q&A where people can just come sit for free, take notes, network, whatever it may be. Um, you know, I highly encourage you to come out. So def make sure you, we connect on Instagram and Facebook yep. or whatever it may be, because we're going to be announcing that date and that location here soon, um, because we want to get it to where we have one, you know, strategically every single month in L.A. And it's a place people can come and man, just just learn the, the, the tricks of the trade and, and ultimately level up. So uh, make sure you, you know, are on the lookout for that meetup group sometime in middle, probably middle <clears throat> to end of June. We'll get that blasted out. Awesome. Yeah. And then also follow Steve. You already follow Steve Trang, but this guy is the man, the myth, the legend. And we appreciate you for having us on. And we appreciate all those powerful videos yeah, um, that, that you have put together and your team has put together. Because, um, you know, I, I said it in the beginning of the podcast. I got started because of a video on social media. Yeah. And it, it sparked an idea. And then, you know, ultimately sparked a, a create a, a powerful business relationship. And, um, yeah, it was just all the videos. So we appreciate you having and us and on. I had a last little word, too, to say before yeah. we wrap it all oh, yeah. up. Um, I, I would say that uh, Nick and I, we really are strong believers in Tony Robbins quote. It's uh, success without fulfillment is the ultimate failure. And um, recently, recently success without fulfillment. success without fulfillment is the ultimate failure. Mm -hmm. And recently we feel like obviously we're nowhere near where we want to be, but we're so grateful for where we are. And we believe that um, we were just searching for this fulfillment. And I came across this Bible verse and, and, and like, I want to have this kingdom style life and Nick wants to have this kingdom style life. And it was like, um, neither should they say low here or low there for behold, the kingdom of God is within. And um, started going within to access this kingdom. And next thing you know, we get these visions. We're in the shower. He's doing it. I'm doing it and meditate, all this stuff. And then these visions start coming. And then we had the visions of just really impacting people, helping people uh, make it click in their mind to where it doesn't have to be that hard. It doesn't have to be all these facts, figures, numbers, KPIs, all this crazy stuff. You can literally simplify it with somebody who and we, we feel like we're the best people who could show people how to simplify it. And we give a we give it all away for free. Most yeah. of it at Millennial Flippers on Instagram. But it's just because it just makes us feel fulfilled when we're sharing. So yeah. if you're watching this and in two years and three years from now, you know, you guys take it over a million bucks and you're making six figures a year now, or six figures a month. Uh, please, 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 please make sure you give back. Make sure you help people. Make sure you help the next person. Because I remember a point in time when I was just listening to podcasts, living in my car, podcasts all night long. And that was the only thing. That little juice kept me going to the next day, to the next day, to the next day. And it's like without a vision, the people will perish. And that kept my vision alive. And so if you guys want to stay alive, if you want to help other people stay alive as far as that entrepreneur drive, make sure, make sure to give back and give back without any malicious intents. Just give back purely.
And that's why these podcasts are so important. So I would tag three or four people in um, Steve's posts and all the different videos in this video because you never know by simply tagging someone they see this podcast they get inspired and and you know I remember early on when we were door knocking those foreclosures we had a podcast playing with no music it was all purely a podcast and three years later um, now built a multi-million dollar real estate investment wholesaling acquisition company um, and it all started with for me a video and door knocking foreclosures and a powerful podcast like Steve's so if you're not already tag tag people in uh, his posts and in and in his uh, videos because this whole thing here what he has going on can change so many people's lives I'm sure they will I think that's a great pl- great place to end it all right thank you guys for watching thank you this was awesome all right brother thank you <laughs>